tax season is here, which means you've received or are expecting that tax refund any day now. And you're thinking about what to spend it on. How about a new home with save with Conrad.com. We're helping renters become homeowners every single day. And it's more affordable than you think. You don't need perfect credit. You don't need a huge down payment. In fact, you may not need a down payment at all. At SaveWithConrad.com, we take the stress out of the home buying process. We'll determine your buying power. We'll even help you find a realtor. And unlike the banks, we don't say no. We say not yet, but here's how. So if you're not ready right now, we'll get you on a plan to be ready. Stop throwing your money away, paying someone else's mortgage with your rent. And start the path towards owning your own home today at SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 32416, Equal Housing Lender. Save with Conrad.com. Yeah. Words are about to be spoken on the extreme life of Matt Hardy, presented to you by the Ad Free Shows and Podcast Heat Networks. I'm John Alba. That's the broken one, the wogan one, the spoken one, and the guy that everyone's talking about this week himself, Mister Matt Hardy. You, me, you, little old me. I got a text literally 20 minutes ago that said, "Dude, what's going on with your boy?" And I think that's going to be the underlying theme of the first half of this podcast, because we are going to be talking about that. And then we're going to be moving on to the fatal four of the greatest of all time tag tournament. We got your votes and we have the four greatest tag teams of all time, according to you, the Extreme Life Faithful and Matt Hardy picked out. It's going to be a lot of fun to dig into that. What's going on, man? Been a been a, been a week, huh? it's been a week been a couple days uh so 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 why was your buddy texting you exactly i don't, I don't understand everyone that. wants to know what's going on with matt hardy uh matt hardy is here doing the extreme life of matt hardy currently <laughs> it's wednesday morning a beautiful wednesday morning by the way here at the hardy compound and uh hanging out having a good time with the kids as soon as we finish this we're gonna go jump in the pool because it's supposed to be 71 degrees today uh but yeah i, I uh I, i'm just living life man doing my thing i i know you are it's great to see uh Happy spending time with the kids. I saw Wolfie and Barty graduated in jujitsu, and I know that was a very stressful experience for Wolfie. He expressed to me, so I'm glad. The dramatic side, as I, I respond to your comment, he is such a dramatic young man. It's so funny, and and he almost does it intentionally. And I think he's very he's very good hearted. He he's he, he has a lot of concern for everyone. Uh, he has a lot of concern for everyone around him, and he wants them to be happy. He wants them to be to feel satisfied and wanted and whatnot. But he is very dramatic when it comes to things like that. Like, oh my god, I just don't. I don't know if I can do it today. It's just so stressful. I was like, bro, <laughs> wait till you're an adult. You'll learn what stress is about. <laughs> well, as as you've long said, you don't know how hard it is to be Matt Hardy. That's right. And that's what Wolfie's going to be saying as well. You don't know how hard it is to be Wolfgang Hardy. <laughs> oh, man. Just life through the eyes of a six-year-old. It's really opening in its own right. It really is, yes. It's, it's, it's really amazing. It's like I every day my children, I look back at them and I go, I wish I could have that perspective of innocence. Of innocence. I wish I could have that perspective of just everything's great in the world. You know what I mean? And like these troubles or these minute things or whatever are your only concerns or your only worries, or your only stress, as Wolfie would say. Uh, it's, it's just amazing how they see everything so vividly and, and beautiful, you know, without knowing the, the, the real challenges that come along later in life. And it is really fun to watch. And it also, I see them whenever they go to sleep. It makes me wish I could sleep like a young child. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Boy, a child goes to sleep. Yeah, right. And they get, they get sleep through an earthquake. Uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm very envious, positively envious. Oh uh, yeah. That's I, I don't think I have fallen asleep before midnight since maybe fifth grade. So I envy the ability to do so. There's no questions asked about that well 
Glad they're all doing well. We we had a gothic baby running right before we started recording. So who's to say when the next run in will happen? Because we know that anything can happen in the Matt Hardy Wrestling Federation over on the compound. Uh, so You're yeah, right. man, let's let let's chat a little bit about some of the the doings going on here. We we did get the debut of Mercedes Monet last week, mm-hmm. and we were expecting that to happen, but we finally got it. I thought she came across with some big time superstar presentation. They had the CEO chance going for her. What do you think of Mercedes AEW debut, Matt? I, I I liked it. Um, looking back in hindsight, I wish it would have been advertised. And and that's not even looking back in hindsight. I wish it would have been advertised before she was there because I I, I know the deal. It was to uh, mirror Punk's debut whenever he showed up in Chicago at AEW Collision. Uh, I, yeah, sorry, AW Rampage. And I feel like the thing with Mercedes, I feel like it had been even more impactful if you would have just went ahead and got it out there. And that would have been for the casual fans. And yes, there are casual fans, people who don't read everything online, who don't keep up with the uh, intricate details of pro wrestling. Those are what I consider casual fans. And they would, you know, I, I would have hammered it home like Mercedes Monet is going to be debuting. Oh, she, that's the girl who was Sasha Banks. It's, it's her. She's going to be at AW, whatever. That, that that would be my only criticism of it. Once again, it was done great. I'm glad she started the show, kicked it off. I would have liked to have seen her used through the show a little more, especially if she was going to come back at the end. I feel like you make this the Mercedes Monet show more than anything else. You know, make it a, a, a thread throughout the show. You know, but that's just me. I, I know you feel that way as, as well, John, because we spoke about it some. But but I did like the debut, the entrance where they it says CEO and it gets the crowd chanted. I think that's very smart. It's going to be very catchy. It'll guarantee those CEO chants uh, go live on for quite a while. And, and at the end of the day, she just came out there and she looked like a star. She acts like a star and she is a star and she's going to be very beneficial for AEW going forward. Yeah, I totally agree on pretty much everything you said. I definitely would have loved to have seen more of her throughout the show and make her the main character. Uh, I talked about this on Strictly Business briefly last week, but mm-hmm. would have loved to have seen some interactions with her backstage with some of the other women's talent. I would have thrown her next to John Moxley or Brian Danielson and just had a little interaction. Show everyone that she is the most important person there in the locker room right now, right? Like tell everyone Mercedes Monet is a main character on this television program immediately. And I think that would have right. uh, been beneficial and and kept a lot of people throughout the show. But again, that's hindsight booking, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think the Mercedes Monet name is still building its equity. And there might be a lot of people who only know her as Sasha Banks. I mean, you, you slip up all the time and call her Sasha Banks. I mean, I do. I'll, I'll always refer to her as Sasha yeah. Banks. You know, it's just like it's like saying if the Undertaker changed his name, I, I would wouldn't call him by the other name. It would be right. Taker. You know, th- there's certain guys that you just get stuck with calling them that title, and and it, and it sticks, and it never people it never call ends. Copeland Edge still. You know, That's <clears throat> of course, of course, they're going to call him Edge, no doubt. Uh, and and there's even a lot of times where there's people who like yeah, like you know. Hangman Adam Page, that isn't his real name, you know, but like people are just going to call him like Adam, you know, Hanger, whatever. I mean, that's just, that's, that's what they'll be known as because that's where they really achieve their uh, greatest success and their most, you know, their, their most popular period and whatnot. And those names end up sticking. So yeah, that's why the Sasha thing sticks. Yeah. I thought the CEO stuff was really smart because it's identifiable. <laughs> it gives you something to latch onto with the crowd right. and, you know, maybe it was intentional, maybe it wasn't, but Certainly oh, that was, not. That hard was definitely to that was that was definitely intentional. Well, well, no, I was going to say it's certainly not hard to fathom the possibility of a CEO versus DMD match down the line, huh? Not at all, man. I I can see that the the dueling chance people going nuts. They, as Pat Patterson would say, people going banana. Yes, yes. I think that's but that's smart. You know, you you, you lay it down there, gives the crowd something very tangible. To bite into and wrestling crowds are crazy man they'll find something like a delete chant or whatever it may be and all of a sudden next thing you know that's crossing over into pop culture right, right. <laughs> and like people did like when the delete started and like when was it that you started to notice that the delete was like really becoming a thing where did you first see them showing up that you're like okay Fans are paying attention to this. After after the final deletion, um, once again, I was looking for another word that seemed like it fit in the to pop culture. It was like cool with the cool kids, the young kids. As you know, I'm an old, ancient human being. And whenever I was shooting the fireworks at Jeff, I remember I was screaming, delete, delete, delete. You know, that was a way like I need to end him, you know, as opposed to like, you know, you know, 
kill, 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 hurt, 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 whatever. Delete is what I was using. And then I noticed after the final deletion, which was so impactful in the big scheme of things, it ended up like people start saying, like, delete, delete. And then I like, you know, add the, the hand motion with it, you know, just like you're swiping your phone with one finger. People, you know, do it like with their full hand, but it's just one finger, like, delete, delete, delete. Because it was kind of a cool word there because people would say, like, oh, yeah, I've got your, you know, you're on my account, but you said some, some, something trashy to me. So delete, you know, it was very easy because it, it worked and it fit in pop culture at that time. Yeah, and and when fans have something to latch into, it becomes a thing of its own. It helps Huge. the performer over, it gets the character over. So, uh, smart, smart thinking. It. She knows what and, she's doing. She, and the fan, the fans, they 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 they're excited when they have something they can chant for a particular talent. Something that sounds cool. I mean, it's exciting and it, it adds so much enthusiasm into the whole building. So yeah, that's that's a positive thing. Or it's just it's the shared experience, right? Like that everyone Absolutely. is doing it around you. The yes chance. Like everyone is doing it with right. you, and and that. Right. That even I mean, I hate the what chant with every fiber of my body, but like that's why it caught on. Right. Because it sure. was something that people could do together. So right. uh, definitely excited to see what Mercedes is going to bring to the table there. Um, and, you know, we're, we're we're full steam ahead here to WrestleMania season, Matt Hardy. And mm -hmm. while everyone's talking about what's going on in philadelphia at lincoln financial field us over at the extreme life of matt hardy we're talking about what we're going to be doing there correct and that's because friday april 5th 4 p.m eastern standard time matt hardy's coming to the stage live tickets just 25 dollars at the sharon philadelphia downtown right after wrestlecon wraps up matt hardy is going to be telling great stories from all the tlc matches over the years matt what can people expect with this live show uh, it's going to be a blast. It's going to be highly interactive. Uh, I'm going to be telling stories that I've never shared before, and it's going to be so much fun. I mean, the TLC is a staple of the Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys. It's the match that took us to the, to the next level. I, I feel like the original tag team ladder match took us from being just WWE wrestlers and WWE superstars. And once we started doing the TLC stuff, we became WWE icons. And it happened very, very quickly, very early in our career. So I'm very excited to delve into this very deeply, talk about all the details, talk about some of the arguments, some of the disagreements we had in certain uh, certain scenarios, you know, between the talents and stuff when we're talking about the match backstage. I'm excited to reveal how we felt about things afterwards. There's so many things I'm going to reveal and talk about in this. It's going to be really an exclusive once in a lifetime chance. Yes, and it's going to be a very intimate event. We're very excited for it. If you're attending this event, there's a good chance you're going to be able to ask Matt anything you want to about the TLC years. So make sure you're there for this. You can pick up your tickets at MattHardyLive.com. We really would love to see you out there. $25, extremely affordable event. It's going to be over long before any of the shows going on that night. you got Spring Break going on. you got WWE SmackDown. you got Ring of Honor Final Battle. This live show will be over before any of those. So you'll have time to grab a bite after, whatever you want to do. 4 p.m. Eastern start time for this at the Sharon Philadelphia downtown right after WrestleCon. So if you're going to WrestleCon, you can just head upstairs and you'll be able to attend with us and have a whole bunch of fun. Going to be a great time. And then later in the night, Matt Hardy, we're hopping across the river and we are going to the world famous Monster Factory for a very, very unique live show. What's going on here? This is going to be fun. This is a, uh, a first a first time ever. You know, Vince McMahon a little bit. By God, it's the first time ever. Um, we're doing a live podcast as I am doing a virtual seminar, more or less. So if you are in the industry at all, if you're a wrestler, manager, referee, promoter, whatever your, uh, whatever your uh, selection is, as long as you work in the pro wrestling industry, you are invited to this. And if you're part of the Monster Factory, come in for free. We want you there. But we are going to sit back. I am going to talk about my experiences. I've had 32 years worth in the pro wrestling game right now. And whatever questions you have, I will answer them to the best of my ability. And I've, I've pretty much been through everything. I've lived a hell of a life, especially through this pro wrestling career. And I'm going to give everybody the best advice. And I'm going to give them the best tips they can use and utilize to succeed in pro wrestling. Certainly so. Tickets just $15 for any outside Monster Factory talent. So like Matt said, you're a wrestler, manager, commentator, referee, promoter, whatever you may be. You want to learn. You want to pick the brain of Matt Hardy. You're going to be able to do this here. You head on over and shoot an email to johnalbasfc at gmail.com. That's J-O-N-A-L-B-A-S-F-C at gmail.com for more details. We've had a bunch of people purchase tickets this past week alone. So very excited to have that. And uh, I think it's going to be a great time. That is a 9 p.m. start time. So if you're in the industry... What better way? Get up close in person. Matt's going to be in the ring, giving all the advice that you possibly are going to want to learn to launch your career. And you can ask him anything about how to make it in wrestling. So 
No better mind to learn from. It's going to be great. Very, very excited for both those shows. MattHardyLive.com and email John SFC at gmail.com. Uh, Matt, they did. You're talking about the influence of the TLC matches. On Monday Night Raw, they're starting to build towards this tag team ladder match that's going to be happening at WrestleMania. Uh, mm-hmm. Pretty cool to see a tag team ladder match at WrestleMania. There haven't been a lot of them. You were involved in, obviously, the TLC matches, and then, of course, the match that you came back at, WrestleMania 33, but there haven't been a lot of them. And they started dropping some breadcrumbs. Michael Cole mentioned the Hardys you know, being kind of legends in that realm. And then uh, the social media channels started chattering because some people spotted you at Monday Night Raw this week. You were you were pulling a sting. You were up in the rafters. What uh, uh, what what can you tell us, man? Because there's a lot of rumor and innuendo out there. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's wild. So uh, to fill everybody in on the full story, Sean Ross Sapp actually uh, contacted me about it, about what was going on, and I gave him the cliff notes of kind of what happened and and what he reported was right. Literally, myself and my wife, which we try and do once, maybe twice a week if we can. We had a date night where it was just me and her without kids. And we were eating in Raleigh. We were having Denver, uh, having a great dinner, a uh, great dinner in Raleigh. And she was contacted by one of her friends that she does a spa with inside of Raleigh. And Raleigh's just a few miles, you know, from the Hardy compound. Everyone knows that. And they had a suite, which they always have over at uh, <clears throat> the PNC, which is the arena in Raleigh. And they invited Rebby over to the deal, said, Hey, you want to come hang out? Whatever. There's free food. There's this, whatever. We'd like to see you. And then, uh, it's funny because this was after those comments had been made by Michael Cole. Like, yeah, I want to correct there. myself. It was about the Jimmy and Jay match, not about the ladder match. But yes, he was correct. talking about yes. brother versus brother. Yes. And it, those happened every 15 years, too, which is wild, right? Yeah. Because there was Owen and Brett at WrestleMania 10, me and Jeff at WrestleMania 25, Jimmy and Jay at WrestleMania 40, and then uh, WrestleMania 55 is going to be Maxwell versus Wolfie. So, yeah, it's very right. exciting. Right. <laughs> so uh, it might even be a three-way, Maxwell versus Wolfie versus Barty, but we can't really break that one-on-one. Uh, pattern so <clears throat> anyway uh long story short so they said hey would you like to come by whatever and Rebby's like oh yeah, we should go by there that'd, that'd be you know whatever i'd like to see my friend whatever and i was like oh i really wouldn't want to go by there she said, well they're in a skybox so it's like closed off and whatever we wouldn't be getting there till 8 45 9 o'clock whatever uh so we actually went Rebby hung out with her friends for a little bit and while i was there the 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 skybox the suite was pretty open in the front and Yes, I did get recognized. Then people started forming a line to like take photos with me and whatnot. And we cut out of there about 1030. I was there probably 80 or 90 minutes altogether. And I probably took 200 photos, which <laughs> once word got out that I was there, it was like crazy. There was literally at one point a line and security came and like had to make them move against the wall, you know, so I could take photos with them. But anyway, uh, just my wife went to go hang out and I was there. Uh, it was a, a very innocent thing at the end of the day. Um, you know, but it, it's, uh, it, it was wild. It was wild being in the PNC arena and, uh, where we had SummerSlam 2000 and that's where the first TLC match went down and just seeing WWE there running again, whatever. Uh, it, it was wild. It was kind of, it was fun just to sit back as a spectator and watch wrestling. And I'm at the end of the day, I'm pro wrestling's biggest fan too. You know, yeah. I love watching pro wrestling if I get the opportunity to, so. Really so interesting. And, and 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 I knew, you know, I, I knew like as soon as I started taking pictures, like, oh my God, this is gonna get blown out of, you know, this is gonna go nuts, whatever. And, and it is what it is. And it actually in, in reality, I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Sean was like, Rebby and Matt Hardy are at Monday Night Raw at the PNC Arena. And I was like, Yes, it's true. Matt Hardy was at the PNC Arena. It was August 27, 2000 for SummerSlam 2000, and the yes. Hardy Boys faced Edge and Christian and the Dudley Boys in a TLC match. Uh, so it was indeed, Matt, fact that you were at the PNC Arena at some point. Uh, listen, yeah, I, I saw some people, The Dave Meltzer was one of them. He, he mentioned, you know, it was a big deal that Rebby posted a video of Matt there. I'm like, dude, all these fans were posting videos and stuff. Like, th- this was not a secret. This was not a showing up yeah yeah let's prove it to AEW. let's let's stick it to all the other wrestling companies out there matt's at raw i was like dude this was gonna end up all over the internet anyway like and your wife is a content creator no oh, that's what she i mean dude if she can if she can make content like people question some of the things she might like oh my god i can't believe she would do that i can't believe she'd do this 
her job is a content creator and it's what makes money. And she actually makes really good money nowadays is to create controversial content. And uh, like that was right up her alley. You know, it is, it is what it is. I mean, there's a lot of things she makes that I don't necessarily agree with, but I understand why she ends up doing it. And it's like, uh, to, uh, to do a callback to your boy, Eric Bischoff and strictly business, you know, uh, controversy creates cash. And, and she very much does that. And a lot of content, content creators do. Yeah. So let's, let's set the record here. Rebby posting a video that was that was not a let's stick it to everyone else out there in the wrestling industry move. No, I mean, no, no that, that was not her intention. I mean, her intention was just like to, you know, cash in on the controversy of me being there and being recognized 200 times. And it was it was all in good fun, all silliness more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, it, a lot of it for shock value, you know, just like, oh, look at this, you know, <laughs> Matt Hardy. Well, it's so funny to me, like, mean? dude. LeBron goes to other NBA games and sits in the crowd and no one's like LeBron's trying to go to the Knicks today. <laughs> right. You know, he's, he's trying sure. to force his way to the Knicks by going to, to watch the Knicks game. I, it, well, to me, the, the, it, it, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and the reason it got even more buzz is because people know my contract is coming up. You know, I'm in the midst of contract negotiations and I mean, I, I think, if you are trying to secure me under contract, I'm a guy you want because like whenever I work for your company, nobody waves the flag harder than I do. You know, uh, whether it's promote the company on social media, whether, uh, you know, uh, promote the hell out of all the positives the company offers. And and I, I, I love, I do love AW. you know, there, there's, there, there's some things I would like to change about my personal career there and, and some of the things that we're doing. But but I do say overall, I love AW because it is very important for the pro wrestling industry. AW needs to do well just because the pro wrestling industry doesn't need just one huge company that no is doubt. in control of everything. They, 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 they need competition. Competition is what makes it thrive, it is what makes it better. For all the young kids that are coming up, competition needs to exist. So yes, uh, I, I want AEW to do well, and I want AEW to thrive. But I want to be in a satisfactory position in what I'm doing in AEW, and and that's kind of where we're at. You know, still negotiating, figuring things out. And once again, Tony Khan is taking great care of me. He has been a good boss. I think Tony Khan is a great human being. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, when it comes for me making the decision about what I do next, it also comes down to making sure that I'm happy and that I'm comfortable with what I'm doing too. In, in all capacities across the board. But there, there is a ton of value in both Matt and Jeff Hardy right now. And if you're like one of the, the FIs or the INs online that don't see that, then I'm so sorry. But once again, social media does not reflect reality. There is Just a ton look at of that va- video. Just look at that video. Look at the attention there, right? <laughs> but, but, but once again, too, uh, people know who we are. Uh, I don't want to say like we're household names, but if you're a pro wrestling fan, you know who the Hardy Boys are. There are people that I meet all the time on the street. They go, "Oh my God, you look like you know that, that Matt Hardy guy. You know the Hardy Boys, the guys who did all the ladder stuff." Like, yeah, nice to meet you. You know, whatever. Like we, I, I get recognized every day I go out in public. I mean, which you that that's like promotion and that that's press that you 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 can't buy that. You know, it's just because I've been blessed with so much TV time over the years. So there is huge value. In, in, in both Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy and the Hardys together, especially that's when we're our most valuable, most valuable, but there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of value in both of us. And once again, I want to be used to the best of my ability and get the most out of my value. And also, because there was stupid chatter about this on some of the like Facebook and X discourse this past week too. It's like your situation is, solely regarding Matt Hardy. It has nothing to do with Jeff or your brother. Like this is your living experience that you're sure. going through right now with this contract situation, and everything. It, it Jeff is not involved in this and I'm not meaning to speak for you here, but it's just, I see people literally just making stuff up. And I would say this about any topic. Like if your life exists to just make stuff up and try to get engagement farming on it on social media you got to reassess what your priorities are because <laughs> there's a million other things you could be doing other than that sure i mean that, that w- welcome to 2024 you know where just uh everything is 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 thrown out there you know and 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 it's hard to really pick out the truths of every situation and scenario it, just like someone is popping in right now oh we God, got this barty hardy 
At least he's dressed. You want to say hi, Barty? Hi. Say hi. Say hi, hi real quick. Hi. All right. What's up, Barty? So what, 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 also what I want to say at, at the end of the day, when it comes to social media and, and, and being online like that, is you just have to remember that, that those are people with individual opinions. Those are people that are going to take whatever narrative they want to create and they're going to push it in that direction. And you just can't invest in any of those social media, uh, in any of those social media takes way too much, especially when it is coming from sources that aren't reliable they don't have credibility as you were saying john there there were a lot of sources that were putting stuff out there that just were, were falsehoods yeah i mean just straight up making up content so but but Marty, unfortunately due to the would, you, would you leave me a little something to drink so, I keep <laughs> my throat, so so my throat doesn't get dry thank you all right say bye-bye Bye. all right um un unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately due to the nature of social media though it's so easy for that stuff to go viral even if it's not yeah. vetted and, and yeah. that's why media literacy is just so important when it comes to digesting that news so I, I i challenge everyone out there consuming this type of news to to really look at who's reporting something and where something is coming from and and i think that that is most important at the end of the day so uh yeah uh, that's anything else you want to add on this whole situation matt no, I mean, uh, it just, you know, once again, we're in the, in the midst of this thing and, and we're figuring it out and hopefully in a, in a few weeks, I will know what the future holds. Fantastic. Great to hear. There's the definitive update right now. Barty, Barty right. nodding along. Barty head outside, please. All right. We're getting ready to get into it. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting ready to get into the weeds. We are getting in the weeds. It's crazy how big he's getting man. all of them getting so oh big. God. Just from when I started the show with you, just seeing how much they've grown it's it's pretty amazing it's one of my favorite parts i i always hear this from people who listen to the extreme like one of my co-workers at sny mm -hmm. queued it up the other day he, he was just saying how much he popped when he saw all the kids doing the run-ins and stuff so it, it oh, makes it God. it's very authentic to this show yeah. matt it very very much is yeah it very much is and maxwell now 72 pounds he was 72 pounds this morning wow, wow. He's getting big. He's just like his legs look big. His torso looks big. He's like a real human being. It's crazy. <laughs> He's going to be tall, too. I, yeah. I, I feel pretty good about that. He's That's crazy, man. Just absolutely wild. Um, all right. Excited to get into this here. The madness of March has begun. Mm -hmm. The actual NCAA tournament has begun. Yes. And I got I got to tell you too, John. I, I know my UNC Tar Heels. They've got a number one ranking in the NCAA tournament in March Madness, but uh, I'm going to give a, a shout out and give props to the NC State Wolfpack. They actually beat them in the ACC uh, championship game in the final yeah. ACC tournament, which was a, you know, a, a huge shocking uh, upset in many, many ways, but congrats to NC State, man. Shouting out to the Wolfpack. Ooh. First thing I did when that game ended was get a text from uh, Shane Hurricane Helms, Wolfpack. <laughs> <laughs> Her Shane yeah. being a uh, Wolfpack guy. That, that, that tracks. I feel yeah. that. Yeah. That's a, uh... There were a lot of bid stealers this year. This, this is going to be a crazy yeah. tournament because there's really only one truly great team in UConn, and then the rest of the field is wide open. So, right. uh, you know, it, it, the, I love the NCAA tournament because it really is an event where anyone can become a Cinderella story so quickly. So sure. we love that. Like in wrestling, we love that storytelling when an underdog goes on a run. And it happens all the time in the NCAA tournament when a 11 seed a 12 seed maybe even a 15 seed goes on a run and all of a sudden they're knocking on the door of the final four but this is the fatal four here the fatal the four. of all time tag tournament we had our extreme eight last week the matchups were highly contested tons of votes came in i know you've been enjoying this tournament matt how do you think uh some of these matchups turned out we we had the briscoes and the hard foundation the young bucks and dudley boys we had the road warriors edging christian we had the hardys and the new day you think any of these were nail biters or, or do you feel pretty confident about who came out on top in each of these i do i i think the edge and christian versus uh road wars match is definitely a nail biter i have no idea who's going to win that one I, i'm sure it was neck and neck the whole while through but before we start talking about all this john let's get I, into I, something we have I, to do <laughs> I was uh, going to tee you. you. I, don't worry. I had you. I was going to tee you. I was going to tee you. But yes, <laughs> please, without further ado, Matt Hardy, hit us with that Matt fact. Matt fact. Matt subscribes to the food chain. The food chain. 
Oh yeah. Like nature's food chain. Yeah. I think is this too. disputable? Is it disputable? I, I I guess there's a lot of people who are just vegans and don't think you should eat animals. Oh, okay. I'm okay I, see with what, animals. I see what you're getting at. I think you're okay with it too, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, no, I mean I'm, you know me, <laughs> I, I am the definition of an omnivore. Yeah, so no, yeah, no yeah, questions yeah, yeah. asked about that. Yeah, that what 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 brings this one to mind for you? No, just and I uh, just I saw something online a couple of days ago about a vegan who was just talking about how we murder animals and it's atrocious and a catastrophe mm -hmm. and whatnot. And, and, and that's fine if that's your view. And I'm one of those people. And I think you know me well enough by now. If that's your view, good for you. Stick with it. I'm all about let everybody have their own views. Let everybody do their stuff and like don't try and like destroy you know someone else's view just because it's different from yours whatever as long as they're not hurting anyone let them live their lives let them live their lives so i was just just thinking about it I was like, ah, you know it, it is what it is we are like the superior you know mammal in all the food chain and we eat what's underneath us and that's okay like i buy that like if there's aliens if they ever come to earth and like they eat us then we'll worry about it when when we get when we cross that bridge, right? You know, so 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 I, I'm okay with the food chain right now. I subscribe to it, and I believe it's it's right that uh, the superior beings, the superior beings, uh, eat what is lesser than them. I think you might need to assert your dominance as the superior being in the Hardy household right now because you've got an inferior Hardy sin behind you right now. Someone snuck in again, Barty Hardy. <laughs> I heard the door open, but I didn't see you because I was. Over he was there like a dinosaur trying to like, like, like you know the raptors in Jurassic Park where they're like sneaking in. That's what he was trying to do right there. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a big fan of dinosaurs. That's probably where he got it from, actually. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Um. No. So, I, listen. I'll tell you what. So, have you ever had vegan food? I have. I think there. And what's cool about like how it's becoming more prominent is. There are a lot of restaurants, vegan specific restaurants that are really putting a lot of work into like making very flavorful vegan food that tastes just as good as any other thing that you would eat. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm into trying some of that stuff, but that ain't going to no. deter me from making a steak. <laughs> no, I, I, I am, too. I'm, I'm all for it. I've had vegan stuff that's very good. And if you're a vegan, I, I am here for it. Do and your thing. I do cold plants. It's too hot to do a cold plunge. Vegans now. might do cold plunges too. It's very possible. They might. You never know. I'll tell you someone who's not but a vegan. When are you one. gonna come up here because of spring? <laughs> it's right. gonna happen, hey, Barty. Hey Barty, we love having you in here. Uh we hate to see you go, but we can't wait to see you leave. All right. <laughs> All right, let's step outside. Go outside, let that have finish. So we can do our cold plunge. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you never know. Barty, out. Out. We're not done. Close the door. <laughs> I love it. I live with a bunch of animals. <laughs> that's why of the course. food chain exists. Yeah, yeah, that's why the food chain exists. <laughs> now uh, I get it. Oh, Brian Danielson's a vegan, or was a vegan yeah, at least. So yeah, no, but and and once again, uh, more power to you if you are yeah. a vegan. You know, I'm 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 happy for you. Like sure. too many people nowadays try and worry about how other people live their life and don't worry about their life. Like, just live your life, man. Let let people live. Fair let point. them do their thing. I was going to tee you up for the record. Um, I, I, I did not I believe you. I just wasn't sure. Mind. I just want to make sure. I appreciate sure. you being on top of things. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Did you know learning actually makes a sound? It's true. Just listen. That's the sound of you learning a new language with Babbel. You can be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. You don't have to pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you actually speak the new language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by more than 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And what I love about Babbel is it's designed by real people for real conversations. This is a true story here. I've been in some job interviews and one of them required you to be at least passably bilingual. I had learned Spanish for more than 10, 12 years growing up in grade school. But after some time and not speaking it frequently, it starts to slip you. 
I decided to brush up with Babbel, and as a result, I was able to make it to the next round of my job interview because I was asked to tangibly demonstrate that I could carry a conversation in Spanish. And with Babbel's conversational methods of teaching, it gave me that upper edge that I needed in order to succeed. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove that Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Babbel has over 16 million subscriptions sold, plus all of Babbel's 14 award-winning language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. So here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners on The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. Right now, get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners, at babbel.com slash hardy. Get 55% at babbel.com slash hardy, that's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash H-A-R-D-Y. Rules and restrictions may apply. You you saw some slim margins. Uh, let's go through the matchups here. Uh, we had the Road Warriors versus Edge and Christian. Now, you thought this one would be tight. Why do you think this one would be close? I mean, you, you have two iconic teams. And, you know, I, I don't use that term lightly with, with the Yazines. either teams. You have uh, Edge and Christian, the guys who were part of the TLC forefathers, the guys who ended up dominating the TLC contests at the end of the day, uh, were very strong in them. And then you got the Road Warriors, which there's a lot of pro wrestlers, especially people from my generation and the generation before, that consider the LOD the greatest tag team of all time, and, and they're not changing that stance, you know, regardless of how great a tag team is, just because the, t- the LOD seemed like the first tag team that was a main event draw, the Road Warrior pop, they got the biggest reactions of the night, whatever, you know, and those are two iconic teams. If you take the Road Warriors out of their environment in the 80s and early 90s, that changes a lot because, like, the way wrestling is today, it's more athletic. Uh, they they want to see longer, more competitive matches. That's what that's what makes wrestling thrive in this day and age. And it would be a different time for the Road Warriors. So it's kind of hard to put them in the correct perspective when you talk about that. But then you've got Edge and Christian, uh, Adam Copeland and Christian Cage, who are still killing it, you know, both the singles competitors right now. And then, obviously, their work they did as a tag team was so strong, even though it was for a short amount of time. It's going to be a pretty interesting contest because I see newer people saying, man, Road Warriors, they, they couldn't have a great 10-minute match, 15-minute match, whatever. Uh, Edge and Christian, they could. They're still killing it right now, and they're they're older. They're an advanced age. Um, and I can see people saying, man, if the Road Warriors took on ENC older fans, uh, if the Road Warriors took on ENC, they would they would kill them. It'd, it'd be over in, you know, two minutes and 30 seconds or whatever it may be. So I'm very split on that one. I'm, I'm very curious of how the voters – chose when it came to the road wars or cnc well and you brought up an interesting point it's like you put the road warriors in the late 90s early 2000s how they do and like we saw them in 98 99 and they did not do well at all in that loaded tag scene in wwe now you could attribute some of it to booking of course but the hardys beat the road wars by the way yeah the legion of doom 2000 so oh 2000 with draws and everything (laughs) yeah um but but they they didn't do well you know, so so there is some tangible evidence there that would suggest it. But of course, you talk about longevity. They were together way longer as a tag team and right. worked way more promotions than edging. Yes, Christian longevity. Did. Good point, John. That plays into it as well, too. And and I think that that matters to some capacity. So, Matt, we had a ton of votes for these again. And if you recall, Edge and Christian barely got past the Usos in the last yeah. round. It was yeah. a tight vote. It was less than 50 votes. Wow. The Road Warriors and Edge and Christian matchup in the Extreme Eight was decided by seven votes. Seven votes. Wow. Decided the winner here. Out, out of and how many people voted? We had over a thousand votes for this round. Seven votes. Seven votes. You, know, and you can do that on uh, two hands. Seven yeah. votes. That seven is votes. crazy. So we had a good sample size and seven votes. So if you believe that your vote does not matter, it's your vote did. Very much mattered here. And the winner, well, uh, let me ask you, who do you think won? Oh, my God. Um, seven votes. Just because you're saying seven votes, that's that's making me lean towards the Road Wars. Okay. The winner of the first Extreme 8 matchup, moving on to the Fatal 4 of the Greatest of All Time Tournament by seven votes, Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors over wow. edge and christian 
Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that's going to upset some of our listeners because you know, a oh, lot yeah. of our listeners grew up on the iconic TLC years, which we'll be talking about at the Philadelphia Downtown Sheridan, by the way, on Indeed. April 5th. <laughs> but, well, but they grew up on those years. And having one of the iconic three teams knocked out here before we even get to the final four, uh, that's that's quite the statement to just how popular the Road Warriors were, isn't it? It is. It definitely is. Wow. I, I'm. I mean, it's. Ooh, I, I I felt because they got by the Usos. I thought the Usos were going to be a very very tough challenge for. Yeah, you thought this was a better Christian. matchup for Edge and Christian. Yeah, I I felt like Edge and Christian. If if the Road Warriors beat the Usos, I felt like Edge and Christian had a better chance of beating. Uh, the Road Wars because they, they're they're an older team too, you know, and there, there's a little bit of uh, there's nostalgia, you know, as far as that team goes too, and there's a lot of people who look so highly upon them because of all the you know the TLC years and their great years together. But yeah, seven votes is just uh, that that's that's amazing. That's yeah. awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you guys over a thousand votes. Thank you guys for voting and just being seven votes. I mean, being seven votes allowing the Road Wars to win is is really uh, amazing. It, yeah, it's, I it's think crazy. even when you put tag teams in your head identifiable tag teams even if you're a quote casual fan the road warriors come to mind just even the outfits uh, yes. right the spikes yes of course like so that is so identifiable that it's almost inherent to a lot of the people who think about pro wrestling yeah and that probably played factor in that yeah the road warriors are moving on to the fatal four and going against them in the Fatal 4 will be the winner of our next matchup. And that is between the number five seeded Young Bucks and the number 13 seeded Damn Dudley Boys. Oh, boy. Two of your favorite tag teams of all time. Yeah. Two teams you've had a plethora of matchups with. Mm-hmm. How do these two different or differentiate rather from one another in the ring? I've worked with them both, obviously. Uh, they they both they work very different styles. Young Bucks work a more modern style. They kind of have the bit that they do. They, they're they're both big on the entertainment aspect of pro wrestling, uh, especially now. Young Bucks later in their career, they get that how to entertain and like roll with the bit. You know the Dudleys. I think it did so much for them. You know when they started doing. You know, what's up? And they start doing the push to Devon. Devon, get the tables. Like those entertainment aspects are so important in whatever your you know character or persona is. And the young bucks, they're they're sneaky good with all that, you know, and, and they understand if they're heels, they understand how to lean into the bit and like do what they have to do to like piss people off. Um, so I love them both from an entertainment aspect. The Dudleys are much more of an old school style where they're very much meat and bones uh type wrestlers and performers when they're in the ring like let's get to it we're big strong guys we're bruisers we beat you up and then we put your ass through a table the bucks on the other hand they're very acrobatic they're very athletic uh they're gonna have a much faster paced match it's gonna be go 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 they're not gonna let you catch your breath a lot uh it's gonna be something that is going to bedazzle the crowd that is watching so when it comes down to the differences between their teams there are some similarities from the entertainment aspect but the way they work and their styles are completely opposite Who's the better heel tag team of the two, and who's the better babyface tag team of the two? Mm. I mean, they they both both are incredible heels. I, I think they're both. I think both of these teams are better as heels. That, Why do you think the Dudleys favorite. are better as heels than babyfaces? Uh, j- just because the 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 way because Bubba uh, has absolutely relinquished his fear of being an asshole in any capacity. And he's like that in real life too. Like he doesn't care what you think about him, whatever his viewpoint is, he'll say, he'll do whatever. And and they were like that. Like you look at those near riots they had in ECW, whenever they would come work at WWE, they weren't afraid to go out there and, 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 and be assholes. And, and, and that's, they, they didn't care what, the internet said they don't care what social media says. And that's something that's very important. And the Bucks are like that in many, many ways. They, they kind of, they've taken hiatuses from social media and they leave that because they don't want to read that stuff just so it doesn't affect them mentally, you know, and, and, and I get that, you know, they're not afraid to be jerks if they need to be as well. Uh, I, I feel like it's hard to top the Dudleys as Hills because if they decide to be Hills, Devon goes, uh, I'm sorry, Bubba goes in all the way and Devon follows his lead. 
So I, I feel like those guys are probably the best heels because they're also like very serious threats when they're heels. The Bucks are more of the chicken shit heels, especially they just like utilize their power. They utilize their power as EVPs currently, you know, to like put other people in compromising positions and whatnot. So, so, so they, they're, they're more of a chicken shit hill act where the Dudleys were more of like a legit, like we're going to bruise you and mow you down type hill act. Yeah. I think to your point about the Dudleys, that was, that was big for you guys at first. And when you had like the tag team tables match, like yeah. the, the the Hardys had to clearly be the baby faces there. So you really needed a strong heel team. And that match kind of elevated the Dudleys to a whole different level in WWF specifically as, as top heels. And, and I guess I struggle with answering that question because when you look at the baby face work, the Dudleys did, it's some of the most over stuff on the entire television show. Sure. You're, you're doing the was ups, you're doing the get the tables and, I mean, to the point where the Dudleys were chanting tables, table, like to get the crowd invested. But I, I, I understand your assessment. I think the Young Bucks are not nearly as great as baby faces as they are heels. I think they're way better heels than they are baby faces. But that's not to say they don't play a good baby face role well. I think the Dudleys play a better baby face role than the Young Bucks play a better baby face role. Does that make sense in what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I can see that. I, I, I feel the, the first thing I say right off the top of about both teams, I think they both excel and they're at their best as Hill teams. Yeah. Yeah. So who do you think moved on in this matchup? Um, as much as I love both teams, I, I feel like the Dudleys may have picked up the W on this one. What do you think the margin of victory would have been for them? Oh my God. Uh, you think this is a blowout? You think this is close? What, what do you think? A hundred votes. 150, 100 to 150 votes. That will be my guess. By a margin of 73.5% to 26.5%. Wow. Your winner of the Young Bucks versus the Dudley Boys. And moving on to the Fatal Four to face the Road Warriors. Those damn Dudley Boys. They blew out the Young Bucks wow. in this tournament. Well, how many votes did that end up being? 250? What would that be? 75% of a thousand. So that's... So 250? It's, a, it's about... Yeah, it's about... No, they beat them, they beat them significantly. So they, they beat them by more than 500 votes. It, it, what was the percentages again? 700 votes. So it was 70, 73.5% to 26.5%. Uh, so, so more or less like 75 and 25, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. literally... They, oh wow! They blew them okay. out. This was not okay. Blown. They did, yeah. Which is so 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 so, so 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 it was roughly five hundred votes. In. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, you can't put me on the, you can't put me on the spot with math. You know this. I've got <laughs> okay. the percentages written down. <laughs> but <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Uh, you surprised by that margin? I I am. I am a little surprised by that margin, especially with the young bucks being, uh, such a current act right now. Because the young bucks pretty decisively beat the rock and roll express yeah and that's like an all-time great tag team right there i i and just I, I i i can see the dudleys beating them because i feel like even the people that think the bugs uh are just pieces of shit and and they're portraying their real life personas on tv or whatever there's there's a lot of that people really dislike the bucks right so i i just feel like they're not going to get as many votes that way uh because some of the people that are online and people are voting for, you know, this is on social media, so that's going to influence the vote as well. And, and some of those people are biased to a degree. But I, I feel like, too, the Dudleys are an iconic tag team, the most decorated tag team in history. Uh, I, I, I definitely felt pretty sure that they was going to win. I didn't expect it to be by that bigger yeah. margin, though. Because they got that real-life heat, those Bucks of youth. So it's working out they do, for them, yeah. I guess. They got uh, that yeah, shoot man. heat. Yeah, shoot heat, right. Now, this was a, this was a blowout. And I'm, I, I'll admit... While I respect the will of the voters, I'm a little upset that we don't have both the Dudleys and Edge and Christian facing each other to determine who, who moves on to the finals. I feel like that would have been a really tight vote. Like, if you think the Road Warriors and Edge and Christian was tight, imagine the Dudleys versus Edge and Christian. That would have been wild. But yeah. the world will never know, as the Tootsie Roll, Ollie, uh, Tootsie Roll Owl would say right. uh, back in the day. So that is one side of the bracket. We've got the Dudleys versus the Road Warriors. And on the other side of the bracket, we had 
the Hart Foundation going up against the Briscoes. The Briscoes beat Arn and Tully. Now, you may remember, I, I was pretty upset about that one, even though I love the Briscoes. I, I really felt like Arn and Tully had earned the merit to move on and face the Hart Foundation, who blew out the Midnight Express here. Right. Uh, man, Bret Hart, Jim the Anvil, Neidhart, Jay Briscoe, Mark Briscoe, four of your favorite guys ever. Yeah. How do you think this one played out? Oh, man. Um, that, once again, this this feels like another toss-up. I don't know. Um, this I one have... was closer. This one was much closer than okay. the Dudley's. Okay. And... Appreciate the heads up. Bucks. I I'm almost going to go with the Briscoes just because I feel like Bret Hart and Jim Knighthart, almost to a lot of fans currently, they don't have as much equity as the Hart Foundation because Bret Hart went on to become a big single star in many ways, and I feel like the Briscoes do have a lot of equity currently just because they had such an amazing Ring of Honor uh, tag team, you know. A, a, they won the Ring of Honor World Tag Team title so much. They had an incredible tag team run in Ring of Honor, and they're also very respected right now, especially just their legacy. You know, considering Jay just passed, you know, recently. It's uh, I almost am going to go with the Briscoes in this one. Okay, now I had said to you that my concern with the Briscoes in this was that while they had a phenomenal Ring of Honor run, and you know, I know they were in TNA too. Mm -hmm. I don't think they quite had the exposure of some of these other teams during their runs. Mm -hmm. And you and can make that, that argument for a few other teams on true. that list of 16 that we had. But I just, like you talk about the casual fan, right? Like, I don't think the Briscoes were on the casual fans' radars all that much. Uh, no, and no, you're right. You're you're 100% right. So that was my mentality going in with the Briscoes. For as and I just wonder, I'm like, like, I feel like this is more of a smart fan vote than a casual fan vote. But yeah, we'll but, see. But then again, you had the Road Warriors go over Edge and Christian, you know. True. So uh, you had mm -hmm. you had the Road Warriors go over FTR, and they blew them out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. right, I, I, it's, that's the one thing that I've loved about this tournament is it's been hard to be like, oh, it's only the diehards voting because FTR lost, the Young Bucks lost, uh, you know, all these teams lost. Right. But then also some of the legends have lost. Uh, the Briscoes beat Arn and Tully. So I think right. that we're getting a really nice mix of fan perspective here. And unpredictability is good, John. You can't, right. look at the, you can't look at the brackets and know who's going to win every match. That's right. Exactly. I can predict that you have another Hardy behind you. I, right I now. saw, I saw, I saw someone <laughs> behind me. Which one who's is behind that? me? Is that Barty again? Barty. <laughs> okay. Barty well, the menace. We're in the spring, which means concert season is about to get underway. You know I am all about that. And we want to help you guys here on The Extreme Life of Matt Hardy afford your summer concert tickets or a wrestling show or a theater show or whatever it may be with our friends over at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I have been fretting to get back on the road with my boy, Bruce. You know that's the deal. Last year, I saw him eight times. He's back on tour now, and I have two shows secured. I'm going to be monitoring the wires for those last-minute ticket deals. Game Time's going to help me do it with their exclusive flash deals, their zone deals, their ability to give me a view from my seat, all on the Game Time app. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the show, and even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last-minute seats, find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. And with those zone deals I mentioned, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for big time savings and the game time guarantee means you're always going to get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code hardy for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code h-a-r-d-y for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed by a vote of fifty-seven point seven percent to forty-two point three percent. So this was this was close. Fifty-seven point seven to forty-two point three percent. Your winner, and moving on, 
to the Fatal Four of the greatest of all time tag tournament. I got the two outside. The Hard Foundation. Look at that. The Hard Foundation. Okay. The Hard Foundation beats the Briscoes. And Matt, I'll tell you, I think it truly is because of that exposure. I just don't think they had the exposure that Bret Hart had, quite frankly. It's, it's as simple right. as that when I break it down. Are you surprised by the results here and how close it was? I a little bit. Uh, I mean, because you know, I I made my educated guess of the Briscoes, thinking uh, trying to get into the mind yeah. of the viewers of the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy. But I mean, I I I can understand why it went that way too. You know, I had yeah. a, a, an assessment which uh, wasn't correct, but uh, it it is what it is. And once again, it's all about the voters. Thank you guys for voting. We appreciate having thousands of, of votes. You know, who who, who would have uh, worked extreme heel main- and who would have worked babyface in a Hard Foundation versus Briscoes match? I, I I would have liked to seen uh I would like to see the Heart Foundation be uh be the baby faces and I'd like to see yeah. the Briscoes be the heels. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think there would have been a really good dynamic, even yeah. with Anvil being the bigger guy, and typically you don't see that in that dynamic. I, it right. could have been fun to see. I I'll, I will be very honest with you though, and maybe this is just me yeah, with yeah. the era yeah. that I grew up in of wrestling. It could be. I mean, I, I did watch the Heart yeah. Foundation stuff, but me personally. I never look at the Hart Foundation as like one of the greatest tag teams ever. I look at them as a very, very good tag team that had a good run, but I put a lot of teams ahead of them. So it's so interesting to me to see the voters hold them in this high regard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel that too. I, I also feel like, I feel like they, they lose a little bit of equity because like Brett went on and became such a big star that it kind of supersedes their greatness in some ways, if that if that makes sense. But does that does that is that the case with Edge and Christian then? I don't know. I, I feel like maybe because they both went on to both be pretty big single stars themselves, that that might even help amplify the greatness of their team. Mm. I just feel like because so rather it, than one versus the other, yeah, rather than Jim the Anvil Nightheart not obtaining the same success that that Brett did, you know. Mm. But it, it's yeah, interesting. I mean, you can make I, the argument no, for the I, Rockers I, then too. I, I, I feel with you. I, I yes, I, I I I'm with you though, I, and I feel what you're saying when you say that about how the Hart Foundation didn't seem like immediately. It's not one of the first names that jump into your mind when you think about the greatest tag teams of all time. Like I mean, I I believe they're among the 16 that you picked. I definitely agree with that. Right. But and like if they were among the 16 for me, they would have been like a 15, 16 rather than into the Fatal Four. But hey, the the extreme life of Matt Hardy faithful seem to think differently, and I respect that. And, right, we do. Uh, you know, again, I wouldn't have even put the Briscoes in that position. I, for me, Arn and Tolly are there. And, and I, I saw some comments from people that were saying, well, you know, Arn and Tolly's run wasn't really all that long. And I'm like, okay, you could make that argument, but their impact in that short period of time, I thought was just as impactful as any. I thought they had a, for my money, Arn and Tolly had a bigger impact on wrestling than the Hart Foundation did. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I can see that. That, yeah. that. I mean, there's nothing, I can't dispute that. Yeah, just my take. Again, doesn't mean anyone's right. Doesn't mean anyone's wrong. Speaking Everyone, of, as, as speaking I say, Matt, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Some some opinions are just worse than others. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Best thing about social media, it gives everyone a voice. Worst thing about social media, it gives everyone a voice. Uh, one thing I was going to say, just talking about Arn and Tolly, uh, I was doing uh, the Galaxy Con in Richmond this weekend. Yes. And uh, they they had like a special kind of horseman section to a degree. You know, it was Arn Anderson, I did see uh, that. Luger, and Barry Windham. And I took a picture with the horseman. And I'm not sure if I was the fourth horseman or just the horse's ass. Probably the horse's ass. There you go. Would be my guess. But Ric Flair endorsed me the next day. He said I was okay to take the pictures. Oh, I know, I know. Ric Flair would have made you a horseman if he had the chance. I know he was. He's a big Matt Hardy guy. I know that. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Just for for lifestyle in another life. <laughs> for my lifestyle in another life. <laughs> oh boy I got that. Did, did you talk to barry windham about the hall of fame stuff we did yeah yeah i, I had a, a fun conversation with barry I've, I've known barry some not well i barry like bray was a big barry fan right he he loved barry obviously their family but he talked about barry a lot you can tell uh windham was very influenced by barry but it was so funny because <clears throat> one of the nights we were there we we drove up on friday and then after we finished the con uh 
we're leaving and my wife said, okay, well, we said we're finished at this time. So we're going to do an escape room in 40 minutes. Are you good to go? We need to get in the car and go. It's 20 minutes away. It's like, sure, we'll do that. You know, so we went to this escape room and we did it. And we had Maxwell, Wolfie and Evie with us. She was there as advertised as the Gothic baby with Queen Rebecca. So we go to this uh, escape room and they have a great time. And then we go to a, a hot pot slash Korean barbecue place, which was fantastic. It was crazy how big it was and it was decorated so nice and whatnot. We ate there. We had fun, whatever. We got back and then Rebby was going to get in the shower. And it was later now. It's like almost 11 o'clock, right? A little after 11 o'clock, we're getting back. And she's like, get the kids to bed. And they're all hyped because they've all been drinking this sugary juice that was there at the place. And they've eaten and they're on the road and they're having a good time. It's a new hotel room and they're seeing it for the first time. And they're jumping back and forth from the beds and they're being loud and yelling. I go, listen, you guys need to chill out. Stop it right now. Stop jumping on these beds, it's time to lay down and go to sleep. Da, da, and I start getting a promo on them. And I said, you better be glad this is me and the shower's running and your mother can't hear you because it'd be way worse. And you guys would be in trouble. Probably wouldn't even get to go tomorrow if you didn't do it. But the next day I go in, Barry said, hey, he said, are you in this room? He said, because I was in the room next door and I could hear you yelling at your kids last night. <laughs> he said, it was almost midnight. I said, oh my, yes, that was. I said, I'm so sorry. But I said, no, 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 don't apologize. I said, I was just sitting in my bed. He said, I was sitting there smiling, laughing about it. I was enjoying it. He said, just to have that many young kids in a room and trying to contain them. He said, it, it is something to be. Oh, that's good. That's, so that was good. great. You excited for the Bray Wyatt documentary? That was funny. I'm very excited for the Bray Wyatt documentary. All right, come in here. Say hi, Evie. Oh, we have a gothic baby running? I, I am very, yeah. We've got her dressed. Come right over here. Hey, Evie, say hello. Hi, hello. Evie. How you doing, princess? Here, come here. I'm going to let you say hello to everybody. People love the gothic baby. Here. They do. You ready? Oh. Gothic baby's half-ass over. She's half-ass over. Hey, did you sign autographs this weekend with mama? Yeah. Did people like you? <laughs> Who's the gothic baby? Me. Yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah. You see the camera? You Hi, Evie. Say, <laughs> Evie, say hello. Hello. Say hello, John. Hello, I'm done. Yeah, hello, John. Uh, say hello, hello, everyone. Yeah, all right, my sweet girl, you look so beautiful. Don't hit any Real buttons. Cute. Uh oh, you're gonna get us kicked off the air. Uh -oh. Yeah, wait, things right. are going well. Let's not. Uh, let, yeah, let's right. not okay, Evie. All right, say bye bye. Bye bye. Time to go. Go find bye -bye. your mother. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, what a beautiful green dress. Go find mama. All right. Thank you. Um, I love so you. Yeah, the Bray Wyatt documentary. They dropped the trailer for that. You looking forward to that? I am. Yeah, that, that's uh, that's going to be that's going to be cool. I, I love the fact that they were doing it. I actually got to speak to, uh, to to Barry and Tony Hunter, the guy that books us a lot. He deals with Bray's dad quite a bit, obviously, Mark Rotundo. And and they knew this was in the works and they shot a lot of footage with the family and, and they were preparing to make this. So I'm so glad they're doing it. And it's cool. That it's coming out, Yeah, you know, around WrestleMania season. And I'm sure it's going to be. A tough one to watch, uh, but it's it's going to be very big and impactful, and I'm glad they're they're honoring Wyndham like this. Hopefully, we get some love for yeah. all the the leaders of worlds fans out there too during yeah. the documentary. It should be should be pretty good for all the woken warriors out there looking to there remember that time period. Yes. Uh, speaking of woken, broken, spoken, we got one more matchup here. The winner of this one will be squaring off with the Hart Foundation with a spot in the finals on the line. Mm -hmm. It is the Hardy Boys versus the New Day, the Day of New, as Ooh. Broken Matt would say. This is a uh, this this is a tough one, Matt. You know, we're talking about one it of the most. We're talking about two of the most decorated tag teams in WWE history here. Mm -hmm. New Day, of course, a team that started DOA. I mean, they were dead on arrival and mm -hmm. then turned that somehow into one of the greatest runs ever in that era of tag team wrestling for WWE into today. Uh, then, of course, the Hardy Boys, the iconic Hardy Boys, the living legends themselves. How do you feel about going against the New Day here? Uh, you know, considering this is the uh, the GOAT, t -t -t um, you know, greatest of all time tag team. Uh, it, it's always nerve wracking when, you know, you're in it, uh, and, and you hope you do okay, you know, and the new day are just such an amazing tag team, uh, three amazing human beings. So yeah, it's a, a little bit of a nail biter, uh, to a degree. So it's going to be interesting. And I'm, I'm very curious to, to see what the extreme life of Matt Hardy voters have to say. What makes the new day so great? 
I, I think they were so great because they were so entertaining. They they had a bit that wasn't necessarily destined for success, as you said, and they leaned into it and they rolled with it and they made they they made uh the asinine suggestion of what they were doing in the very beginning into something that was legitimate. They like roll with the punches, they rolled with the bit, they're doing bootios, they're playing the trumpet, whatever. This stuff seems outrageous, but but it worked and they got it over. And I think the reason why is because they so genuinely leaned into it. And also they were all three just outstanding performers on their own. Yeah. And you talk about audience participation stuff before like the new day rock stuff. Yeah. Like that all played so perfectly into it and they were really good at being on the pulse of social media too and like youtube with yeah. up up down down and yes. that was really really important in getting them to that next level uh two of my favorite tag teams i'll tell you that i could watch new day matches all day long i could watch hardy boys matches all day long this one however was a blowout 77.1 percent to 22.9 percent your winners and moving on to the greatest of all time tournament Fatal Four to face the Hart Foundation, the Hardy Boys. Come on now. Come on. Oh, gosh. Nervous. <laughs> the Hardys are moving on. So it will be Matt and Jeff versus Brett and Jim. How are you feeling about the that? The Hardys versus the Hearts. Yeah, how are you feeling uh, about that? Uh, it's going to be interesting. You know, Brett, we coming for you. Oh, easy there. You can't say the next word. <laughs> Your yeah, boy was in the headlines this week. You see oh, that? I saw, yeah. Mm. He was man <laughs> he was uh, man manufacturing some crisis, right? <laughs> yeah, that is that is exactly what happened. <laughs> Tell me I didn't just hear that. <laughs> That's right. I, I do. I, I love some booger. It's so funny. Even I saw the little clip where he said they said, Yeah, I got something to tell you. I had an incident. I had an incident. The way he stresses words, I love so much. I had an incident. We'll see him pull. I, I'll tell you about it all there. I was like, oh, come on, man. I said, like, <laughs> he's trolling. Then, I mean, I can almost tell like, you be, he's, he's trolling. Well, everyone was like, you got to be kidding me. And he's like, everyone's making something out of nothing. I'm like, dude, you brought this up. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no one would have known about this if you didn't bring it up. It was so ridiculous. Oh, boy. It was, it was. So great. It was so great. <laughs> I was cracking that, up. That's so on brand. That's such Booker's comedy. And just a sense of humor. I, it's, it's tremendous. Oh. Well, you're moving on to face the Hart Foundation here, man. I mean, were the Hart Foundation, were, were they really on your guys' radar growing up? We dug them. I mean, I, that was right around the period where we were becoming big wrestling fans, right? Towards, you know, late 80s, mid to late 80s. Uh, and in that period where there was the Hart Foundation, the British Bulldogs, the Rockers. Uh, th there were a lot of great tag teams in there. And obviously the Rockers were highly influential on myself and Jeff. Um, but yeah, the Hart Foundation was a tag team I dug. And I always dug Bret Hart. And I felt like my style, Jeff was much more, once we started wrestling more professionally and got a little more into it, I felt like I was more of a Bret Hart guy because I tried to be like more solid, more fundamental, and just like be believable in my mannerisms in the ring. Right. And Jeff was a little more flamboyant. He was a more of a high flyer. He was the more charismatic and he was more towards Shawn Michaels. And I, I kind of always felt more drawn towards Brett stuff than Shawn, although I love Shawn. And I, I still think Shawn is one of the greatest wrestlers to ever do it because he had such, such an amazing total package. Yeah. And I mean, of course, the Hard Foundation had one of the most iconic tag finishers ever, the Heart Attack. Yeah, which was a uh, um, could have been fun to see the Hardy Boys try the Heart Attack at some point, maybe integrate yeah. that into yeah. the vernacular. So that's a tough matchup for you, man. I, I mean, it again, is. on the surface, I, it would be a blowout to me, but as we've seen, the Hard Foundation they've captured something here in this tournament with the with the viewers and the listeners. So clearly, there is there is some. Yeah, big love to go around for the for the Hart Foundation here, and this could be a tough one for you, in, in route to the finals. And then on the other side of the bracket, we got the Dudleys and the Road Warriors. Ooh. Man, this one's going to be tough. Yeah, that, that's that's. I mean, it, it just it just depends on what day that one is uh, voted upon that is going to determine who wins. It's just crazy, depending on what side of the bed people wake up on in the morning. I mean, that's just two teams that either team legitimately could win. Well, like two two bruiser tag teams, right? Mm -hmm. Like that total much totally at an older era of wrestling in that sense, but just one that they would have 
you talk about those pops and the crowd reactions, the reactions that would have come out of that match in their prime would have just been amazing. And yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That, how I mean, do you think that, Hawking Animal a, would have felt about going through tables? I think that, I think they would have been down, down with yeah. it. Especially they would have went through a table and no sorted. Yeah, I think, I, I think they would have been down for doing that. Uh, and, and they could have been really good. True. And I think like in, in the environment where they were having a table match, I think they could have excelled in that too, where it's not like too fast paced. It's like not as athletic driven as, you know, necessarily a 10 minute competitive match would be. You, you slow it down, you're setting up tables, you're, you know, moving hardware around. I think, I think if you would have taken prime Dudley's with prime road warriors, LOD, they'd have had a hell of a fucking 10 minute match. Uh, 10 sure. minute, uh, tag team table match i'm surprised by this fatal four honestly i i thought going in that we were going to get edging christian dudley's hardy's and maybe arn and tolly and uh to end up with the dudley's hardy's heart foundation and road warriors is, is very interesting to me yeah. how, how do you feel about the fatal four here uh it is it's not necessarily who i expected I, I did I I could have seen the Road Warriors and Dudleys, uh, but but I didn't expect the Hart Foundation to succeed as as much as they have, because like you said, you know I they don't immediately pop in when they say you say greatest tag teams of all time. They definitely are in in the top echelon, you know. But like when you think of the greatest of the greatest, the goat, t -t 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 -t, they don't immediately pop in everyone's head. I don't think. But that doesn't mean that they can't, because evidently it doesn't. Yeah, they uh, they have done well here. So going to be really interesting. Voting is open now as this drops so you can get your votes in. We really want to hear what you guys have to think. Uh, it's going to be a, a fantastic fatal four as we march on to the final round of the goat. Of the Not a hundred thousand dollar prize, Matt Hardy, for the winner, unfortunately, like <laughs> it, but nonetheless, uh, there is something to be said about prestigious bragging rights that come with winning the GOAT. So next week we're getting down to the Terrible Two. Is that right? The Terrible Two? I don't know about the that. Tremendous I gotta, two? It's not very, that's not very flattering to call them the Terrible Two, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come up with a good the gimmick. The Terrifying name, Two? The Terrifying Two. We'll, we'll have to uh, come up with a good gimmick. Something you have to reach into <laughs> your Vince McMahon, Bruce Pritchard vernacular and come up with there something that will resonate with the extreme life faithful the Good medical stuff, man. the medical facility men <laughs> who do you think came up with the tit was that a vince thing uh, probably mean, it's probably was russo gone at that point uh yeah russo was gone at that point right he he, he left during that when we were in the midst of the tournament oh so it could have been a russo it, it, it could have been a russo thing I could see that being a Russo thing. Oh, 100%. Of course. He, he 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 left when we were doing either match two or three of the Terry Invitational Tournament. Okay. And uh, I, I remember thinking like, whoa, is this going to change a lot of stuff? Like, is this going to, you know, really affect things here as far as the hierarchy of WWE? And nothing really changed. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, what I want everyone to do right now, guys, go to matthardylive.com, pick up your tickets, $25 for the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy Live, 4 p.m. April 5th. You're going to have plenty of time to go to any other event in the area. I promise you that. We're going to be in and out of there by 5.30 at the latest. It's going to be a great time. We're going to be recording this. There's going to be Q&A. It's going to be all these incredible stories about the triangle ladder match tlc1 tlc2 and even tlc3 matthardylive.com is your place to get your tickets and if you're in the wrestling industry and you want to learn more from the mind of matt hardy you head on over to the monster factory on friday april 5th at 9 p.m tickets 15 dollars for any wrestling talent promoter manager commentator referee whatever you may be free for all monster factory members shoot an email to john alba sfc j-o-n-a-l-b-a-s-f-c at gmail.com that's how you're going to get in on the fun there i know there's a lot of indie wrestlers in town for wrestlemania weekend why not learn from one of the true goat and, go <laughs> and uh get some of that matt fact not matt fiction about where your career can go and of course we remind you head on over advertise with hardy.com promote your business to the extreme every single week on the extreme life of matt hardy get it out in front of thousands of listeners and viewers by checking out advertise with hardy.com matt anything else you want to add here uh no very excited for the uh wrestlemania weekend activities it's going to be such a busy time myself and jeff we are going to be at wrestlecon friday morning 
Friday afternoon, as John said, we're doing the Extreme Life of Matt Hardy live stage show at 4 p.m. And it's going to be at the Russell Con Hotel. We're going to the Monster Factory that evening. Then that next morning, back again at 9 a.m., uh, myself and Jeff will be signing Saturday morning. And then uh, Sunday morning, myself, Jeff, and Rebby will be signing as well. She'll be there every single day. We'll have myself, Jeff, Rebby, and Gothic Baby, and maybe even Maxwell. We might be taking Maxwell. Okay. All right. I love it. I love to hear it. It's going to be a great time. Cannot wait for all of that and you never know anything can happen at these live events they always end up uh, there's, there's some twists and turns that get thrown our way some things that matt and i never even see coming so yes <laughs> some people hijack the microphones you never know <laughs> <laughs> they could <can> happen <laughs> right but it is a good time uh, i'm looking forward matt to hearing what kind of drama comes from the internet next week but we'll have to just keep our eyes on the pulse of that the words have been spoken. This has been the extreme life of Matt Hardy. We will see you next time. Delete!